everybody, welcome back to the channel. Now what I have here are two rather nice South American hardwoods. We've got Greenheart, which is well known for its rot resistance and strength. And we've got Purple Heart, that is uh, well known for its incredible color and beauty. Uh, Purple Heart is found more centrally uh, and in the southern areas of South America, where Greenheart is predominantly found uh, in the nor northern areas like Guyana and Suriname. Okay, now what we're gonna be making is something to start off the year with a bang. So we're gonna make a mallet. Now this big piece here is obviously gonna be the business end. This is gonna be the part that does all the, the destruction. And the purple heart is that what we're gonna use for the handle. Now both woods have a very, very similar weights and density. So they are gonna be quite compatible and hopefully we'll end up with a nicely balanced piece. Now, we're not gonna be drilling all the way through. Instead, we're gonna use a blind fox wedged uh, mortise and tenon joint, which should hopefully keep the handle in there nice and sound forever. Now, if this piece of purple heart I've got here isn't long enough, uh, and I won't know that until I've created the full shape and the mallet. I do have another nice long piece of beautiful purple heart as well, uh, but I prefer to cut off that scrap first rather than start doing something with this one. Right, I think first things first, I will get out my mitre saw and just try and take off a couple of these corners just to make it easier to turn. This is quite a, a notoriously hard wood to turn so to give myself uh, a bit of a break, I'm gonna see if I can cut off these corners first. Okay, not the most amazing cuts in the world, but it's slightly rounder. So that should hopefully make our life a little bit easier. Now the steps involved with this is, first of all, we need to get it on the lathe and I'm gonna do that between centers. And then I'm going to turn a tenon on one end so we can flip it round, hold it with the jaws of a chuck and then start uh, drilling and shaping. Uh, now, first question is which end do we want to be the top? This end, I've got a bit of a knot there, so I think that's best being the bottom. So in other words, that is gonna be the top. Now it's the top we want to put the tenon on, so this side's gonna to have to have our drive spur in, we'll get it on the lathe, bring up the tailstock, and start turning it round. really is incredibly hard wood. I wish I had a large mallet to do that with. Okay, that's nice in a decent place between centers. Now, because this wood is incredibly hard, I'm gonna make sure I tighten this up as far as I can, just to keep us safe. Okay, right, okay, we're all set up, we're all ready. Uh, starting off with a half inch bowl gouge, it's just sharpened up. I'm just gonna slowly work away at these edges until we can get it round. Initially turning at about 750 RPM. Okay, it's going nicely, We're nearly there. I'm just going to quickly go and sharpen up again for the last few cuts and then we'll start squaring off this side so we can make a tenon. Mark out for my tenon. At least that was fairly easy. Right, I'll turn this round and start working on the base. Okay, we've got this turned round. Now, the initial thoughts, it's quite big, it's quite long for a mallet. So 
we may want to be coming up about this far but I'll make that judgment a little bit later on. Now I'm going to start shaping it. Now mallets are generally wider at the top than they are a bit further down. It's at a, a slight angle, it's not flat all the way across. So we're going to start creating that shape. And the easiest way to do it is rather than having the tool rest parallel to the piece, I'm just going to turn it in at the same kind of angle I want the mallet to be. And the idea is, go down a bit, the idea is I'm just going to start running the tool across, keeping in the same position and that will slowly recreate that shape or that angle on the piece. That's a the theory anyway. Okay, that angle's coming. I do need to sharpen up again. Shape's coming on, ball gouge is having a horrible time, it's just kind of skipping across the surface of the denser, the denser wood. Right, I'm going to go sharpen up again, and we'll try again. Okay, I've increased the speed to about 1200, and this should hopefully give us a smoother cut. We'll see how I get on. As you can see, that was a much better cut. It's such a fine finish. We've still got to go over a couple more passes to get it all smooth, but uh, that's nice. Guess what I'm going to do? Yep, I'm going to sharpen up again. That's nice. Some beautiful grain in this. I think we're going to get it all smooth. That's going to look quite, quite remarkable. Ended up going in with a, a skew just to try and even up this surface because the uh, the ball gouge was having quite a bit of time and it was just kind of skipping across the surface. All right now, time to decide on whether or not this needs to be a little bit shorter. I think just taking about half an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch off the bottom will just make it balance a little bit better in terms of the shape. So if I just take it down about that much, I think. I'll do that bit by bit with a skew. Next step, let's put a nice little gentle curve on here and then think about starting to drill the hole. Okay, beautiful. All right, I shall set up for drilling holes and I should bring you back in a second. Okay, we're all set up to drill this hole. Now, as I mentioned at the start, we're not gonna drill all the way through this because we're producing, because we're using a Blind Fox wedged uh, mortise and tenon joint. 
So I think we probably only need to go about nine centimeters deep. So I'm just going to pull and mark on my force a bit. The correct depth. So when we get to that bit, we can stop. Definitely the hardest thing I have ever drilled. Right, I'll let this cool down for a little bit. Okay, it's cooled down a bit now, so we can finish off this bottom bit. Uh, I'm just gonna put a slight chamfer, so as opposed to it being flat, I'm just gonna put a slight angle on there, just so that can uh, match in with the style we're gonna do on the top. should do it. Right, I'm going to quickly sand this. I'm not going to make you sit around and watch it. Uh, I'll bring you back when we turn this piece around again. Okay, the bottom sanded up beautifully. I've done a little bit on the sides as well, but uh, not properly yet. Now we're going to start taking away this tin and start curving the top. Now I'm going to be mixing up between push cuts and pull cuts. The, pull, the push cuts are going to leave a nice polished surface and the pull cuts are going to leave a, a slightly rougher, sur rougher surface but the pull cuts are going to clear more material more quickly so it'll be a mix of them both. Progress has been made slowly, but I'm off to sharpen up again. anything quite as hard as this. Right, now before I do some final bits on this, I just want to go up this side again, because as you can see, we've got quite a bit of tear out, which we need to address now before going any further. Hopefully that was enough to get rid of the, the tear out, which I think it is. Not a great surface, but I'm sure I can get it with sanding. It's just so blinking hard. Right, okay. I think I'll just whittle this way down and take that off. Uh, actually, I could do a couple of pull cuts. That's gonna help smooth that up area a little bit. And maybe something else. Actually, let's try a scraper on there. Okay, Oops. hat off. Right, that's definitely better. I'll take this little nib out. And I'll do that with a little spindle gouge.
pretty good. Right, I'm going to set up for sanding. As usual, I'll let you watch a bit of it, then I shall bring you back when it's done. pretty nice. Now we're going to oil the whole mallet at the end. But I'm just trying to give it a clean with a bit of isopropyl and see how the grain looks. <laughs> oh wow. That's absolutely beautiful. It's going to be the nicest mallet in the world. I'll take this off. And we'll start making the handle. Okay, so there's our mallet all ready for a handle. Uh, I quickly weighed this, by the way, and it's uh, 1.7 kilo, which is about 3.7 pounds. So it's certainly got some heft to it. Now, this is the uh, purple heart I was wanting to use. I wasn't quite sure if this was going to be long enough. So I just took one of the jam chucks I had, and I've just turned this end down to the right size, just to kind of give me an idea of what it's going to be like and what kind of length I need. And I think I need just a little bit less than what we've got here. So that fits quite happily on there. So I am going to be able to make use of this scrap, which is good. Now, in terms of the scrap, we've got cracks on this end, so I'm going to utilize this nice bit of wood from the outside. No idea what's behind there, so we'll just have to, to hope that it's okay. Right, so we've got a bit of heartwood, so we'll allow for that. And now, this that area is about 67 mil, goes on to 65 quickly, so we'll say 65 millimeters. Now, half of 65. Is 32 and a half. So I'm just I'm going to cut off this scrap at the end. Okay, now I am going to cut this one in half because I've got a little surprise. Right, I'm going to chop this. I shall see you back in a second when we're starting to glow up. Okay, there's our purple heart all nicely cut up. Now I did consider that the uh, purple heart itself would be too much of a contrast to the mallet end. So I have a, a slither of green heart, which I'm going to sandwich between the two. I think that'll look quite nice. All right, so we'll start off in the usual way. This is Tight Bond 3 glue. Now, a little grain of salt at each end. That helps to stop the wood slipping when it's been clamped. Now, it's too cold in my workshop <coughs> for this to to cure normally. So I'm going to be taking this inside the house to dry for the next 24 hours. Right. That should hold it. I'll see you in 24 hours. Okay, there's our little block, which is going to be our handle. Now I need want to put this between centers so I can turn it round. Uh, and I want this green heart to be right in the middle. So I'm going to put my dry spur right in the middle of that, clamp it down, and then get it round. I'm not quite sure which end of this is going to be the top or the bottom yet. So it doesn't really matter which way round I do this as long as it's so hard, as long as it's held in the center. 
Okay, we're nicely held between centers. It's all locked off and it's nice and tight. Uh, I'm going to be starting off to get this round using a, a one inch record power roughing gouge and we're going to be turning at around well just over a thousand rpm. Okay, we'll just stop quickly just to check on the wood and to move the tool rest a little bit closer. I am wearing a glove at the moment because it's incredibly cold in here. So please excuse that. nice and round. Now I'm not particularly happy with my glue up. I've got a few gaps in there which uh, I'm not quite sure why that is the case. It may be better slightly deeper but I did save some sawdust from cutting it so I can fill those gaps so that's not really going to be a problem. Now let's just take a quick look at this wood and try and figure out which is going to be the top and which is going to be the bottom. Now, the biggest unknown was this top because that's under an awful lot of wax. So I'm just going to quickly peel down, uh, do a peeling cut from this top edge and just take a quick look at the wood underneath the wax. Okay, there's no cracks there. That is excellent, so that's fine. This side is all good as well. So either end can be our uh, top or bottom, so that's absolutely fine. So let's make a decision. I think this is gonna be, right, that's gonna be the top. The glue up on this end is significantly better than the glue up on this end. So if we can hide that, fantastic. Right, so I'm gonna start off by uh, taking this down to just above the diameter we want to go inside the mallet, which if my memory serves me correctly is about 44 millimeters. It's a little big, but that'll do for now. I don't want to be going too far. I can always take wood off, but I can't put wood back on. So I'm gonna carry on with that and just take that width down for, that's a good question, how far? Okay, that's how far I want to extend that down. all checked out. Now we can start thinking about the handle design. Now that in itself is quite a decent size uh, area to be able to grip with. I do need something going out down here, like a, a broader end, just to stop it slipping out your hand. Okay, if it narrowed down then it would stand the chance of coming out the hand too easy. So we do need a larger deeper area here. Right, okay. I'm gonna get out my ball gouge and just start messing around with the design here until I get something I like.
Okay, now as it stands, that is quite oversized. It's not going to be quite that ugh, meaty and hold to hold in the hand. But I do need, just to get an idea of a gauge, like I say, I can't put wood back on, but I can easily take it off. So I'm liking the shape, but that does do need to be a lot narrower. Starting to feel nicer. I like the slightly higher end here and then narrower here to get that index finger wrapping around that bit there. Okay, so nice to work on. I like what I've got so far. It needs a bit of refining, but that feels pretty comfortable in the hand. Now, as I've mentioned a couple of times, we're doing a blind fox a hidden Morton tennis joint, which requires us to cut a slot into the top and put a, a pin in. So when it's hammered in, it opens up the top of this wood here, kind of gripping it in place. Now, I would love to have this kind of wider area here to butt up against the bottom of the mallet. Uh, and if I'm very clever, <laughs> sorry, I can't take myself seriously. If I can be fairly subtle, I should be able to do it and keep this butted up to it. We're gonna have to do an undercut so there's no gap. So this edge sits nice and flush with it but I'm gonna to have to be very, very careful as to where I cut this off and how deep I make this uh, fox, oh, what's it called? Blind fox, hidden mortise and tenon joint. Now I'm probably just blabbering, uh, but I'm trying to work out in my head what's the best way of doing this. If I have this, the exact length to hit the bottom of the piece, then by the time I'm into the last few bits to wedge it in, this will have opened up and I won't be able to put it in any further. So it won't go all the way in. Therefore, this will stay a few millimeters out and it'll just look odd. And I don't want that. If I have this a little bit shorter, so it kind of opens up at the same time as that makes the bottom, then that's the kind of ideal situation but am I running risks of not having it 100% safe? I don't think so. I mean, it's gonna be glued as well, and wood glue is gonna be incredibly strong on this wood. So, I don't know, what do I do? You can't help me, you're watching this after we've done it. I think I'm gonna try it because I really like that flared bit there. And I think it'll add something nice to the piece. Okay, let me finish off the shaping this while I'm contemplating my life choices. I'm just going down to a spindle gouge just to help with tidying up these areas. That's a nice finish. That's a beautiful finish, actually. Oh, I've got a bit of a tear out there. Well, I'll have to sort that in a second. Right, I am gonna try and figure out this with this detail left included. I think it's worth it. Right, okay. So, first thing is to get this to exactly the right size. Well, a couple of 
nice spots. So I think that's pretty good. So I'll leave that as it is for the moment. Now, I do have a hook to put on the bottom. <clears throat> Excuse me. I do need to sort out that. So in a second, I'm going to be taking it off here and putting this end into a pair of jaws so I can tweak this end and put a hole in ready for the hook. So I'm going to do that all in one go. Right, so that's the end sorted, ready to accept the eye. I'll just put an undercut on there, so when they are married together, it's gonna butt up nicely to the base of the mallet. And that's about it. Right, now to quickly sand over this. It won't take long. I'll maybe let you watch a bit of it, but you'll find out in a second whether I do or not. Okay, sanding went beautifully. Now I've put it back between centres because I need to turn away some of this length. Uh, I've done a quick test fit and it's fitting absolutely beautifully, but it is still too long in its current state. Now, this is a bit I'm starting to get nervous about because I've got to do a cut in here so we can put a wedge in so when we hammer it home, it opens up and grips inside. Now, if this is too long, in other words, if this edge here we've created doesn't go all the way in, then there's gonna be a gap between the base of the mallet and this, which is gonna look very nice. So I have to try and make this a little bit shorter to allow for the fact that this is gonna open up and we're still gonna get it home and get this up to the edge. So the depth is 83 mil to make it fit properly. I better use a pencil rather than a, a wide marker. That's better. Right, that's the depth. Now I'm thinking if I make this a little bit shorter and I'll make the wedge that goes into it just a couple of millimetres wider. Maybe up three or four millimetres wider than the actual slit itself. And I think that'll give us enough wiggle room to be able to send this home. It's not an ideal solution. I don't even know if it's a good idea, but we'll find out. So I'm gonna part this off on that second line, and then we're gonna cut a slit in here, ready for our our tenon. Right, I'm going to put a slit in here, uh, make up the pin, and I'll see you in a couple of seconds. Okay, we're all about ready to go. I've made a pin to go in there. I drilled a hole at the bottom of the gap just to stop the wood from splitting. Uh, I'm resting on a nice soft surface so I don't mark it when I'm hammering it at home. I've got some wood glue, a spreader, and my mallet. So I'll just put some ample amount of glue in here. I'll put some glue into this joint as well. Hopefully once this goes in, it's never coming out. Okay, right, it's resting on the pin there. Whoop. Okay, well it's gone in. I have lost a little piece of wood there, which that will glue back down. So I'll not lose that. Just check the rest of it's home. Okay, excellent. Right, I shall go and let this dry for a little while, and then we shall oil it, put the hook back in, 
and see what we've done with. Okay, all right, I'll see you back when that's ready. Okay, that's had a good chance to, to dry and we've got the hook in place. So I'm just gonna give this a couple of coats of linseed oil, let it dry and then we can take a fine look at it and talk about it. So this is a boiled linseed oil. No, it's no, not food safe, but uh, I don't think we're going to be using this for any food preparation. It will give a nice hard coating on the wood and it will nourish it nicely as well. It's going to really seep into the grain, which is quite beautiful by the way. Now it is a drying oil, linseed oil, so it does require time to dry. And when it does dry, it does go hard. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a lavish coating on now. In about 15, 20 minutes, I'll come back, wipe off excess, and then we'll, produce, then we'll repeat that process a couple of times. Now you may notice when I was turning the purple heart that it was looking quite brown at times. Now when you, uh, Purple Heart, it kind of goes more purple the more exposure it has to UV light. So if I was to leave this outside in the sun, not that there's been much sun for a while, but if I was, then it would go an awful lot more purple than it is currently. You can also speed up the purpleization procedure, if that's a word, by uh, applying heat. If you've got some old, uh, or if you've planed some purple heart and it's gone like a brownie colour, then you can apply a bit of heat with a, hair, uh, a hot air gun and it will turn it back purple. Okay. Wow. Okay. Right. I'll let this dry. I'll come back in 20 minutes, wipe off the excess, and then I'll do that a couple more times and then we'll t take a look at the final object. But I'm happy. And there we go. Green heart and purple heart carving mallet. Now it's been quite a challenge this one. It's not my usual fare, so I was a little bit out of my comfort zone, especially with the joints inside here. If you are fancying giving it a go, just go for the usual straight through design, because I think it may be more trouble than it's worth. Also, it's not a great idea putting uh, the glue up inside the handle. It does look very, very nice, but in terms of uh, ease, it's best left without. But I'm very, very happy with the way it's come out. It's got quite a heft to it. It's well over two kilo. So it's gonna do some damage when it's used. A couple of friends of mine saying that, uh, you know, you don't wanna use it, just keep it for show. But you know, these things are designed as tools and I will be using it. Anyway, uh, last week I must mention that uh, I did this resin pot. If you haven't seen the video yet, then just look on my uh, channel and you'll see it there. But I kind of got a, a bit of a mess up with the links uh, to the resin website and I've fixed that now. So if you look at the description below, you will see uh, links to the relevant websites and the discount code to use. But apart from that, I hope you've enjoyed this one. And I'd like to thank you all for watching. If you've enjoyed this one, I'd really appreciate a, a like and subscribe and all that kind of thing. And if you leave a comment as well, then you're gonna be entered into the next giveaway. I haven't quite got a date yet uh, when that will be, but if you leave a comment, then you are going to be entered. But apart from that, thank you very much indeed. Happy New Year's for everybody. And I shall see you next time. Thank you. Mm -hmm.